Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 ridiculous horror movie creatures. World's most pissed off snow cone. No, no! For this list, we'll be ranking the strangest, wildest, and occasionally hilarious examples of monsters from the world of horror cinema. What's your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Were Sheep and Mutant Sheep. Black Sheep. Oh no. The stunning werewolf transformation from John Landis's horror classic An American Werewolf in London is legendary. Now, take that scene and replace it with a sheep. Sounds silly, right? Well, that's what any viewer of 2006's Black Sheep will find if they tune in. The movie plays its plot about carnivorous farm animals fairly straight. It even includes a surprisingly brutal and physically realistic transformation scene meant to imitate the famous werewolf film. Despite writer-director Jonathan King's best efforts, casting sheep as villains still looks pretty silly. Most of them look too fluffy to be threatening, but audiences can judge for themselves when they check out this well-reviewed and sheep-filled horror flick. Number 19. Lubden the Leprechaun – Leprechaun Franchise Lubden the Leprechaun is a gold-digging menace that has been thrilling audiences since the early 90s. <laughs> a ring around the rosy, a pocket full of posy. <laughs> On paper, the idea of an evil leprechaun slaying unlucky victims shouldn't work. But over the years, he's become beloved for his outrageous actions and campy dialogue. Warwick Davis also brings unfettered charisma to every single one of his appearances. His work made the character connect with fans through sequel after outlandish sequel. Against all odds, the public accepted leprechauns as viable villains. Hold it right there, pilgrim. I'm not gonna hurt ya. Nah, I'm not gonna hurt ya. <laughs> the hell I'm not. Though Lebden might seem like a big joke at first, anyone who's seen his adventures on Earth or in space know he's capable of wicked deeds. Number 18. Evil Slugs. Slugs. While slugs are known for being slimy and slow, they're not usually known for attacking unsuspecting humans, but the ones in Juan Piquer Simon's film are definitely down. Damn thing bit me! During the movie, slugs that encounter toxic waste try to take out as many humans as they possibly can. But since they're the size of your typical mollusk, the movie keeps inventing absurd ways for the creatures to get to their victims. A lot of deaths should have realistically been avoided if the adults just moved a little faster than slugs. Even when a lot of the mollusks are in one place, it still feels like they'd be too slow to take anyone out. There's probably a reason slugs never slithered their way into a full franchise. Number 17. Byram, aka The Ripley, Dreamcatcher. Even some of the best computer-generated visual effects can risk appearing fake and unconvincing when put against something real. No one knows that better than the crew behind Dreamcatcher. The aliens known as Byram look like big worms with frightening teeth. However, the low-quality CGI makes it hard to believe they're actually attacking people with their chompers. And it only took one infamous scene of them attacking from a toilet for them to get a hilarious nickname from horror fans that we can't repeat here. <laughs> The combination of viewer comments and bad CGI turns the Byram into slimy jokes. 
Number 16. The Octoman. Octoman. One of the first gigs for special effects legend Rick Baker saw him working on 1971's Octoman. It's no fair. You come so far for nada. Finished, that though. The suit for the titular Octoman is nothing if not imaginative. It has bulging eyes, long tentacles, and is bipedal. Since the movie never shies away from showing every inch of the Octoman on screen, audiences get the full picture of the silly creature. It's painfully obvious that the creature is nothing more than a stunt person in a cheap suit. And the more it steps into the light, the more unconvincing he becomes. While Baker would go on to do fantastic work, Octoman is by far his silliest looking beast. Number 15. Elmer. Brain Damage. Hi. In Brain Damage, a psychedelic parasite called the Elmer latches himself onto a victim named Brian with trippy results. The creature uses his host to satisfy its hunger for brains. <laughs> Honestly, this terrifying concept is just dampened a lot by the creature design. The bizarre and grotesque Elmer looks pretty endearing and almost cute. Its tiny eyes and goofy smile doesn't look that threatening on the small puppet they use to portray it. If the filmmakers had kept the Elmer off screen completely, it might have been more effective. The silly puppet that ended up in the film doesn't quite measure up to its frightening premise. Number 14. The Mangler. The Mangler. The Mangler was another Stephen King adaptation with a silly premise and an even more ridiculous monster reveal. After a series of terrible fatalities, the heroes discover that the culprit is a demon within a laundry machine. Sorry, did you think the titular Mangler was some giant, badass, clawed beast with sharp teeth and the will to kill? Or perhaps some horrifying alien mutant whose appearance would give you nightmares? Nope. The Mangler is actually a possessed laundry press that will cause more stains than it cleans. I'll do something. I'll dance. That's what I'll do. <laughs> I'll do a little dance for you, Sherry. Even with the demonic explanation, The Mangler is one of the strangest horror movies from the 90s. Number 13. Langoliers. The Langoliers. While Bronson Pinchot's hammy overacting was pretty rough in the made-for-TV The Langoliers miniseries, the atrocious CGI monsters were much worse. After building the suspense to their grand reveal, the creatures known as Langoliers made their lackluster debut. Make them go away! Please make them go away! I'll be good! I'll be good boy! Please, I promise I'll be good if you just make them go away! These computer-generated creatures are more laughable than frightening thanks to their goofy, toothy design and poor attempts to blend them into the background. Before blaming the effects on the time period alone, it's worth noting that Jurassic Park was released two years prior. While audiences weren't expecting something quite as good as a dinosaur, the Langoliers could have had much more bite if they were rendered better. Number 12. Goblins. Troll 2. In the not-sequel Troll 2, an unsuspecting family has to worry about being consumed by goblins. Joshua? Joshua! But since these creatures are vegetarians, the humans need to be converted into plant form first. This leads to a series of silly scenes where the family has to avoid accidentally consuming a substance that will turn them into vegetables. But instead of trying to trick humans, wouldn't it be easier for the goblins to just be better farmers and grow more plants? Regardless of whether their plan is worth it or not, their design is definitely laughable. The masks and costumes look absurdly cheap. Nothing about these twisted vegetarians inspires fear at all. All. And remember,
Number 11, Zombievers. Zombievers. We cannot stay here. Yeah. No shit! <laughs> <laughs> It's a horror tale as old as time. Some truck carrying dangerous toxic waste just happens to experience a crash that sends its contents careening off into the wilderness to infect beavers. After the fateful accident, Zom Beavers rides a delicate line between playing it straight and maintaining the film's penchant for parody. But the titular creatures never really become a big damn threat. They look like rabid Sesame Street puppets on a ridiculous rampage. And since they can cause humans to turn into zombies, the beavers eventually become the second scariest things in the movie. Sticking with regular beavers might have actually enabled us to take them more seriously. Number 10. Roman Robot Monster Robot Monster is the sort of film that immediately comes to mind when one thinks of how a quintessential cheesy 50s B-movie is supposed to look. Humans, listen to me. Due to an error in calculation, there are still a few of you left. You escaped destruction because I did not know you existed. Now I know you are watching. The titular monster, named Roman, is tasked to kill all the humans. Only this robot didn't count on falling in love. I cannot, yet I must. How do you calculate that? At what point on the graph you must and cannot meet? Yet I must, but I cannot. It's amazing how this film manages to play its premise completely straight. After all, the titular robot somehow wears a hair ape suit with a classic spaceman helmet on top, complete with antenna. It's statistically impossible to either hate on Roman or think he's actually an intimidating villain. But despite its shortcomings, the antagonist definitely keeps the movie interesting. Number 9. The Stuff the stuff. Look at that, that's meant for us! This memorable creature feature from B-movie maverick Larry Cohen features a truly one-of-a-kind movie monster. The titular Stuff is actually a parasitic alien entity masquerading as a sweet and sugar-free dessert that's capturing the appetites of shoppers everywhere. Unfortunately for ice cream salesmen, the white substance is making the sales of frozen treats nosedive. Oh, it's also simultaneously infecting and devouring those who eat it from the inside. The titular stuff looks just like the ordinary marshmallow fluff, and it's yet another horror villain that's ridiculously easy to avoid for anyone with a sense of self-preservation. Fortunately, the movie knows exactly how silly the premise of the movie is and embraces the goofy stuff. Can't get enough of the stuff. The stuff, the taste that makes you hungry for more. Get that no. off my station! Number 8. Killer Clowns. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Okay, so the titular Killer Clowns from Outer Space may be ridiculous, but they're also ridiculously awesome. An immense amount of imagination went into conceptualizing these alien features. Don't worry, they. All we want to do is kill you. When they arrive on Earth, they're willing to use any traditional clown trick to feed on humans. Human puppetry? Check. A comically oversized mallet? Double check. The killer clowns even turn some of their victims into giant mounds of cotton candy for crying out loud. For anyone wary of the average clown, these aliens will probably come off as nightmarish and demented. But for the most part, it's a lot of fun to see what trick these absurd aliens will execute next. If that's not fun, we don't know what is. What are you going to do with those pies, boys? Number 7. Jack Frost. Jack Frost. I said, 
Who's out there? Uh, uh, well, it ain't Frosty. This anthropomorphic snowman is what Frosty the Snowman's evil twin from hell would probably be like. This grim and gross Jack Frost came to be after a wicked man was genetically fused to snow after an accident. Now transformed into an icy-hearted creature, he becomes a one snow man army that aims to get chilling revenge against the family of the sheriff who captured him. Along the way, Frost uses silly themed weapons like icicles, turns into bath water, and has tons of grown-worthy ice puns on deck. Gosh, I only axed you for a smoke. <laughs> the creature's rampage looks hilarious during most of the movie thanks to the quirky snowman costume. Just watching Frost try to grab anything with his mitten hand is hilarious. Number 6. Robert. Rubber. What is one supposed to actually do with a movie about a sentient tire that takes people out with psychokinetic powers? Take it 100% seriously? Luckily, director Quentin Depew balanced absurdist humor and surreal situations to make Robert the Tire work as a villain. Amazing. He just blew up a bottle without even touching it. Really? Let me see. That's odd. While the circular menace goes around taking people out for the slightest excuses, there's tons of meta-commentary. The self-aware nature helps confirm how irrational it is that this tire is going on such a violent tear. Thanks to clever filmmaking, Robert has rolled right into the top tier as one of the best killer tires in the history of cinema. Hey, wait! It's not the end! He's been reincarnated as a tricycle! Number 5. Turkey. Thanks, killing. There's no such thing as an evil turkey. There's no such thing as an evil turkey. Oh, wait. I lied. <laughs> 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 Every 505 years, the demonic turkey rises to fulfill a shaman's desire to cause carnage. Somehow, the talking fowl is surprisingly effective at his job. It probably helps that people let their guards down around him because he looks a lot like a cheap puppet. But they realize how twisted it is once this crude bird lets out profanity-filled lines. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? You kids can't kill me, assholes. I'm invincible. His dialogue is almost as ridiculous as the fact that the humans let him get the best of them with dumb disguises and a turkey body. Since Turkey was brought to life on a movie budget of $3,500, it's admittedly impressive what the villain accomplishes, but the absurd creature still deserves to be made fun of around the Thanksgiving table. Number 4. Deathbed. Deathbed. The bed that eats. How does a bed become a horror villain? Well, it's relatively simple. After a demon suffers a tragedy, its tears of blood imbue a piece of furniture with the power to devour victims. Anyone who can stomach that ludicrous explanation will be in for a truly unique horror villain. Oh my God, I'm being eaten the narrative attempts to follow a demonic bed throughout the ages. While there are some surprisingly gory scenes, at the end of the day, it's still mostly an average bed. Even though it has some telekinetic powers, its victims could have easily stayed out of range. All these victims would have been fine if they just hung around newer and less demon-infested mattresses. Number 3. Killer Tomatoes Attack of the Killer Tomatoes franchise <laughs> Director and co-writer John DeBello knew exactly what he was doing when he went full-on parody mode for his first film about deadly produce, 1978's Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. The film does a great job at using its organic villains to satirize established horror movie and disaster films cliché. 
All the crimes are committed by tomatoes that are never anything other than, well, tomatoes. In other words, anyone looking for two-legged tomatoes, red food with faces, or tomatoes that amalgamate themselves into human form will be disappointed. But the movie makes up for it by providing plenty of hilarious death scenes. <laughs> We won't spoil how the tomatoes become ketchup if you haven't seen this ludicrous masterpiece. Number 2. Sharktopus. Sharktopus. Oh no! Not like this! We've lost count of how many absurd monster movies that have made their way to sci fi over the years. While it was tempting to talk about Whale Wolf, the creature that was arguably the most memorable debuted in 2010's Sharktopus. There is no such thing as a shark. <laughs> The CGI used to bring this undersea monster hybrid to life is so atrocious that it looks like it was rendered back in the 90s. Its backstory doesn't make it any easier to take seriously. Apparently, the Navy's desire for a new weapon led to the Sharktopus being born and eventually going on an unconvincing rampage. Although the Sharktopus was apparently popular enough to star in two sequels, it never became any less ridiculous than the first time audiences saw its tentacles and teeth. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Ginger Dead Man. The Ginger Dead Man franchise. The hell is that? Well, it sure ain't the Pillsbury f dope boy. There's one franchise that can give you a fight between an anthropomorphic bong and a possessed gingerbread man. It all started with a Gary Busey villain whose ashes got mixed in with regular cookie mix. The combination of sugar, spice, and everything not nice kicks off the start of the newly named Ginger Dead Man's violent spree. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Watching a small cookie man increase its body count is just as ridiculous as it sounds. Surprisingly, audiences dug the weird creature design and out of a cookie box thinking for the villain. Eventually, Ginger Dead Man had gained enough of a following to appear in the evil Bong universe to face another silly villain. Who knew a half baked idea would find so much success? Eat me, you punk! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.